ever taken one of those personality quizzes on Facebook? Let's raise our hands. Okay, most of us, right? How many of us have ever found ourselves saying something like, oh, he can't help his indecisiveness, he's a Libra? <laughs> Let's say you take one of those astrological personality quizzes and you're rewarded with something like this. How many of us would read this and think, huh, okay, yeah, that sounds like me, that's pretty accurate. Maybe most of us, come on, be honest, raise your hands. Most of us would read this and think it sounds like us. Okay, this is part of a profile that was indeed prepared by a professional astrologer for Marcel Petio, a French serial killer whom the French press dubbed Dr. Satan. If you felt that it described you, don't feel too badly. So did 94% of respondents in a French study who were presented with the full 10-page profile. This sort of stuff engages what's known as magical thinking. Now, we're not referring here to flying unicorns and fairy dust. Instead, we're talking about what happens at a magic show our senses get fooled into believing in something that isn't real because it seems real, generally because of appeals to emotion or simple trickery, as with our personality profile example. But honestly, what's the harm? Other than perhaps some harm to our egos upon learning we identify with the personality of a serial killer, <laughs> what does it really hurt if we engage in a bit of magical thinking every now and then? Well, research has shown that when we open ourselves up to magical thinking in one seemingly harmless little area, it makes it much easier to open ourselves up to magical thinking about much more problematic things, like homeopathy. How many of us hear the word homeopathy and think of herbal medicine? Probably a lot of us. Homeopathy isn't herbal medicine but is instead founded on the idea that the less of the active ingredient there is in something, the stronger the remedy. Indeed, the strongest homeopathic preparations have zero molecules of active ingredient. Here's an example. Oscillococcinum is a purported flu remedy that has made its manufacturer over a billion dollars. It's sold in pharmacies, and its active ingredient is duck, liver, and heart. Seriously. But see, it's a homeopathically strong remedy, which means there's no duck, liver, or heart in the pills. This was corroborated in an interview given by the company's president when she said, of course it's safe, there's nothing in it. Because there's literally nothing in the pills, they only ever had to kill one very unfortunate duck who has been coined the billion dollar duck. If that's not literal quackery, then I don't know <laughs> what is. But still you might be thinking, well, okay, so maybe some people get ripped off, but it's not like it's gonna kill them, is it? It might. All the children listed on this slide died because their parents gave them homeopathic preparations instead of actual medicine. And the thing is, these parents loved their kids. They weren't trying to harm them. But they fell into the trap of magical thinking. Their kids died as a consequence. And these parents were convicted of charges ranging from child abuse to manslaughter. Although we might not think about it, facts and hard evidence are powerful. But when we give in to magical thinking, we don't require facts and hard evidence. And so we give our power away. This allows us to be manipulated. And the scary thing is, we are all susceptible to it 
It doesn't matter how smart or well-educated we are. So how do we protect ourselves from it? Well, we have a few tools at our disposal that we can all use in order to take back our power and combat magical thinking. When we're being swayed into a belief, we need to ask ourselves why we're feeling inclined to believe it. One of the most cited reasons for believing in something is anecdotes or testimonials. That's why advertisements are loaded with them. These personalized stories appeal to emotion, and they often engage in trickery, too. So our first tool is to ask ourselves, am I feeling inclined to believe this because someone is telling a story that personally resonates with me? Here's a real and fairly typical example. Notice the highly emotional content here. As humans, we are drawn to stories like these and inclined to believe them. After all, why would anyone lie about something so deeply personal? But anecdotes are actually the worst reason for forming a belief about something. For one, stories can simply be made up. But more importantly, our experiences are filtered through outside influences and our own errors of thought. Imagine the subjects of that French experiment discussing the amazing accuracy of their personalized astrological profiles, having no idea they had in fact been prepared for Dr. Satan. Here, they would genuinely believe what they say to be true, but they would have incomplete knowledge. And this is an important point to remember. We all have incomplete knowledge. None of us is an expert in every field, and even experts have incomplete knowledge. That's why they do research, to get more. This brings us to our second tool, gain more knowledge. So let's say we get to a point where we recognize that yeah, it's mostly stories that are convincing us, but we're still not sure. So let's use that second tool and increase our knowledge. As an example, let's look to a topic that has created a global tsunami of magical thinking, vaccines and autism. Anti-vaccination parents are so concerned about the risks of vaccines and autism that they ignore the risks of infectious diseases, including things like paralysis and long-term brain injury and death. But are vaccines and autism even linked? Well, we can use that second tool and gain some knowledge. When we look into it, we find on the pro-vaccines and autism side, we have two studies done by a single researcher on a total of 103 children and one of those studies faked its data. On the other side, we have thousands of studies performed by thousands of researchers from around the globe on vaccines and vaccine ingredients involving over 25 million children. And importantly, the data have been verified, meaning not faked. So in this case, no matter how emotionally compelling we may find the stories, the data simply do not support a link between vaccines and autism. But for some, these data still won't be good enough. And why? Because the data are seen as coming from the establishment. How many of us here have at least a mild distrust of the establishment or authority. Be honest, come on, everybody should be raising their hand, because you know it's true. Pretty much all of us. <laughs> this brings up our third tool. We have to examine our beliefs and see if they're coming from a rejection of the establishment. Basically, are we rejecting good ideas because we're acting like rebellious teenagers? 
but to really reclaim our power, we have to see if we are simply replacing one form of establishment or authority with another, possibly worse one. Take, for example, some of the forms of alternative medicine that many use to buck the medical establishment. What we think of as traditional Chinese medicine didn't exist before 1950 when it was invented by Chairman Mao. It was and continues to be aggressively promoted by the Chinese government to the Chinese people and to the West. Homeopathy is endorsed and promoted by British royalty. Prince Charles has a foundation that supports homeopaths and homeopathic hospitals, and he uses homeopathy on his cattle. Go figure. And while many use herbal drugs to bypass big pharma, good number of the companies that produce those herbal remedies are simply subsidiaries of, take a guess. Big pharma, right, exactly. So Chinese government, British royalty, big pharma, all those sound pretty establishment, don't they? So these three tools of examining emotional appeals, gaining knowledge, and questioning those establishment figures all allow us to hang on to our power or reclaim our power if we've lost it. We can use them when we are establishing new beliefs, but we can also use them to examine beliefs we already hold. In that way, we can root the serial killer profiles and billion dollar ducks out of our lives. Thank you.